initially. So good afternoon. Today we'll discuss spray drying of milk. Am I <clears throat> am I properly audible to you, Nitish? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we'll start. So today basically we'll we will be discussing the different types of spray drying machines. Okay, the differences. Um, we'll first discuss the whole machine, uh, the all the components of the machine, and as the components vary, the type of machine also varies. So this variation is mostly due to first the primary product, second the structure or the conditions we want to create for creating that or for obtaining the product. Like for instance, if we prefer baby foods, so dry power, uh, dry form baby foods, they need to be uh, made in a controlled environment. So in that case, vacuum process is used. Whereas for normal dried milk powder, the atmospheric uh, drying method may, might also be used. Clear? So depending upon yes, the of the machine, different type of spray drying techniques are used, and different kind of, and different kind of machine be. Uh, different kind of machines are uh, manufactured or installed okay so first we'll uh, the slides are clear to you you can see them yes ma'am okay so uh, first of all we will uh, revise the steps which need to be followed during a spray drying technique okay so there are two parallel steps which happen one is the air supply and another is the um, concentration feeding of milk in the drying chamber. So first we'll start with the air supply. So air is taken inside the chamber. Okay. So first the air crosses an air filter so that the particulate or the pollutants can be removed. Then this air from the outer environment is taken inside the drying chamber with the help of an intake fan. What the intake fan does, it creates a negative pressure. As a result, air moves from out, outer environment inside the chamber. Clear? Then this yes, air is heated. Okay. So after heating, it is dispersed into the chamber with the help of an air disperser. Okay. So the, now the heated air enters the drying chamber. Till this point, everything is clear. Yes, ma'am. On a parallel note, what is happening? We have the milk or the product, which is first concentrated. Then this concentrated product is atomized. Atomized in this means. Reducing the particle size from what was the range? Tell me. I discussed in the last uh, lecture. What was the range of an atomizer? Ma'am, 0.3 stable sum. Ma'am, was 50 150 microns. Okay. In okay. Milk particle is, is reduced to a size of 50 to 150 microns. Then this atomized particle is fed we said feeding of the chamber you remember we use it term feeding or introduction of air, air part, uh, milk particles into the chamber so this atomized particle is feeding into the drying chamber which when comes in contact with the dry heated air converts into a dry product okay so this step is clear yes, milk uh, comes from raw material to dried product okay then what happens to the air yes ma'am which carries the atomized dried particles that moves out into a pump, okay, where the particle is uh, collected and rest of the air is exhausted out with an exhaust fan, which is further removed from the chamber with an exhaust air hood, okay. Is this clear? Okay. Yes, now you have in mind that what happens in case of air and what happens in case of the product, okay. So now we'll take a visualization of the whole system. So as you can see, just a minute, give me a second. So as you can see, it's not showing. Why is it not showing? So uh, for this time being, so as you can see, here is number one, the inlet part. Okay, is this clear? 
So from this, mm -hmm. the air enters. Okay. Then there is this inlet fan number two. So what happens in fan? The just because a negative pressure is created here, hence the air enters from here and disperses into the air heater. This is the air heater, right? Okay. Yes, from this air heater, what happens is that the air is distributed. This is the fourth chamber where the air is distributed. This is the drying chamber. So the heated air enters here and then it is distributed in the drying chamber. Okay. What happens in the drying chamber is the material is feeded. Okay. The material enters. Like you see this eight number is the high pressure pump. Pressure is given to the yes, okay, atomized and then spread here. Then in the drying chamber, with this drying chamber, the atomized particles, they come in contact with the dried air. Then what happens is, this dried powder is removed from this part and the air where the particles are very, very fine, okay? that they don't fall on the conveyor belt or on the receiving unit what happens is it moves up with the air here they have a back filter they have a filter so what happens that the particles get settled but excuse me just give me a moment sorry for the interruption okay so what happens is that here um, in this chamber, there is a, a back filter. What happens in the back filter is that those tiny particles which are mixed with the air, exhaust air, those are filtered out, they again fall down and the exhaust air goes out. You see here is the exhaust fan part. You can see this. So by this exhaust fan, the dried air which was previously used for uh, in the drying chamber that is exhausted out. Okay. Clear till here. Mm. Then what happens is that there is a fluid bed. This fluid bed, this is the this orange one is the fluid bed. So what has this has hot air in it? Okay, why hot air is it is here? Because when temperature, when the air moves from this whole direction, what happens? The temperature will fall down. As a result, air will air will become heavier. So it will not move up. So in order to make the air move up, what we do, we again reheat the air so that the air moves up, passes the filter back, the small particulate materials fall down. Okay? Clear? No. Okay. okay. Then here is the air handling unit. So what happens here when the dried milk powder moves, then there comes an air handling unit. Here what happens that air movements are controlled so that all the powder or dried milk powder is collected in one particular area. So here mostly cyclonic or circular motion of air is created. Okay. Then that falls down and from that, that powder it is sifted. Sifted means why we sift? So that we get a uniform particle size. Okay. Then this dried powder is sifted through this portion. This is the sifter. Okay. And then dried powder goes out. Is the whole process clear? Yes, ma'am. What happened? Just a minute. Okay. So we'll move to the next slide. So now we have seen the whole system of spray drying. So as I told you, depending upon the variation in the components in the particular set of instruments because it's not a single instrument. There is a fan, there is a pump, there is a heater, there is a drying chamber, there is a cyclonic air controller. If we have different different components in that particular instrument or in that particular set of machine. Okay, so what we will do is so what we will do is that And what we will do is that that these different types of uh, different types of machines are, can be assembled as as we uh, change different components. Okay, like first is types of uh, 
method types depending upon method of atomizing or spray like i have told you depending upon atomization three types of uh, spray drying techniques are what were those tell me i discussed in the last class hello yes what were the different types tell me it horizontal and vertical ma'am no you are not studying that is wrong whatever i have taught you you should revise once okay so one is nozzle what kind of nozzle was there pressure nozzle second was pneumatic third was what was the third one think about it can you remember these no yeah that one spray nozzle compressed air centrifugal spinning disk you remember these i taught you yes ma'am yes ma'am centrifugal yes ma'am so as we vary the different components of the machine different types of machines can be derived out so the the points on which the machine can be uh, differentiated is first is method of atomizing spray material second is method of furnishing heat third is method of heating air fourth is position of drying chamber fifth is number of drying chambers sixth is direction of air flow seventh is pressure in air eighth method of separation of powder from air ninth is treatment and movement of air tenth is removal of powder from drying chamber eleventh is method of heat transfer twelfth is drying chamber atmosphere thirteenth is position of fan fourteenth is shape of drying chamber and fifteenth is product being dried we discuss each and every point individually okay so first is type of atomizing spray material so there are three types of spray drying uh, under this heading one is pressure spray nozzle or hydraulic pressure jet second is compressed air spray or pneumatic spray and third is centrifugal spinning disk i have discussed all three in the previous lecture so any in these three points any form of confusion in these three points no ma'am okay okay tell me uh, centrifugal spinning disk what was the rpm used for centrifugal spinning disk uh ma'am there was two uh, two condition of rpm yes. uh, one was uh, 2500 uh, rpm 2500 rpm for hmm. small disk or large disk for smaller for, for smaller ma'am no for large disk i told you when diameter is more the rpm has to be less otherwise what will happen milk will not reach on the outer uh, boundary of the disk and it get it will get spilled within the disk okay so if the disk diameter okay. is larger rpm should be less and if the disk diameter is smaller rpm should be more 50 up to 50000 rpm clear yes ma'am okay so then comes method of furnishing heat so what is under method of furnishing heat the source of heat generation for heating the air so it can be either steam or gas or fuel oil or electricity i guess there is no confusion in this any confusion no. okay next no. method of heating air so the previous one was source of heat the variation in the machine or the type of spray uh, spray heating technique spray drying technique on the source of heat and then how do we heat the air so the source of heat can be the same but the technique of heating can either be direct or indirect direct like you directly heat the heater and the air is heated okay second is indirect that is you heat use heat exchangers like plate or coil so you heat the plate heat heating plate and that heating plate will heat the air heater okay or will heat the air clear so one is direct okay. one is indirect this is clear yes. that comes the next one is number of drying chambers okay so here you can see a picture it is again a representation of a single drug, uh, spray drying chamber so here only one chamber is present as you can see drying chamber but when there are uh, it may be one or it may be multiple it's wrong that i have written two it should be multiple okay so 
in that yes, case there is one main chamber and there are various subsidiary chambers clear so you, uh, yes, like in the cyclone part if you can see just a minute Just a minute, just a minute. So in this cyclone part, as you can see, can you see the mouse? I'm moving can you see it yes ma'am yes ma'am see the mouse right so as you can see here that this chamber may be single or this may be multiple chambers and from those chambers all the air comes inside the cyclone is this clear yes ma'am okay. then comes the next one is the position of the drying chamber so the drying chamber may be vertical or horizontal. Here you can see a vertical one and on the left you can see a horizontal one. Hello, are you there? Hello? Yes ma'am. Okay. Then comes direction of air flow. Yes ma'am. So depending upon the direction of air flow, the types may be counter current as you can see in the picture. In one way, in one direction the air flows and in the other direction the product flows, okay? Then parallel, both the product and the air flow in the same direction yes. and then at right angles. The product flows at, in right angle to the air flow. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then comes pressure in the dryer. So how the pressure in dryer is maintained? It is either atmospheric pressure. So the pressure inside the dryer is seen as the atmosphere outside or it is vacuum. Okay, there is no pressure there. It, uh, the drying process takes place in a closed environment. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then comes method of separation of powder from the dryer. Okay. So what happens is that it is either cyclone or it is sorry, multi-cyclone. I've written a wrong, the spelling is wrong. So, uh, the uh, powder separated is uh, with the help of cyclone, like we create worlds of wind, a cyclone is created and in this way, the powder is removed from the dryer. Then comes the back filter. I have discussed the back filter with you, that we move the uh, dried air through a filter, back filter, and the air moves out and the particles, they collapse down. Then comes a liquid dust collector. What happens in a liquid dust collector is that the liquid flows, okay, it collects the dust and then that liquid is sublimated and the dust is taken out, okay? And there is electric dust collector. Here, the dust is collected with the help of electric field. The, yeah, the milk particles or the dried milk particles are electrically charged and then they are removed from the air, okay? Clear? Cyclone, bag, liquid, yes, dust, electric collect, dust collector. Okay. Then comes treatment and movement yes. of air. So the air we are using, how do we treat and move the air within the instrument? So one is recirculation of air. The same air is recirculated time and again within that particular unit. This is clear. Then comes dehydration yes, of air. Dehydration of air is mostly used in liquid dust collector. Because here, sublimation takes place. So the air is used. Once it comes in touch with the liquid dust collector, it, the moisture content increases. Then it is dehydrated and then reused. Okay? And then comes the conventional form. What happens in conventional form? Air is taken out and thrown out. Okay? The same air is not circulated time and again. It is not circulated time and again. Okay? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Or should I repeat it again? Okay. Then comes removal of powder from drying chamber. 
just a minute. Just... Sorry. Ah, so the removal of powder from drying chamber. So how the powder is removed? We used conveyor belts to remove the powder. So either it is a simple conveyor belt as shown in the picture or it's a vibrating conveyor belt. The, the conveyor belt vibrates on a surface. So what happens? All the dust collects at the at the single place, okay? At, at, at a uh, center point and then that powder is moved. As you can see here in the diagram, there are slants. So what happens? It vibrates and the whole powder comes in the center region. Then comes the sweep conveyor. Powder falls down and a sweep comes on the conveyor belt. It sweeps out the whole dried powder. Is this clear? And then air conveyed to cyclone. Yes, ma'am. The drying chamber, the powder comes, then a cyclonic movement is created. All the powder comes down and it is collected. Clear? Conveyor, yes, vibrator conveyor, sweep conveyor, and air conveyed cyclone. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, that is method of heat transfer. So method of heat transfer between air and the outer environment, like when we heat the air, what is the method of heat transfer? And second is that what is the method of heat transfer when we concentrate the liquid, okay, which is to be dried. So since we are taking liquid and air into con consideration, hence convection and radiation plays a role. So we all know that heat is transferred in three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. The concepts you must be knowing. Now, since here, yes, we are taking into consideration uh, the product, which is milk here, and uh, the air, okay? So liquid and air, these uh, or gas, these are heated by convection or by radiation. Hence, the method of heat transfer here is either convection or radiation. Clear? Just okay. Then comes the drying chamber atmosphere. So the drying chamber atmosphere, it can be normal air, okay? Or special atmospheric condition can be created, like nitrogen, which is the most commonly used, or any inert gas, such as helium, argon, these can be used, okay? Why inert gases? So that oxidation does not happen. Okay? okay. So either it is air, like normal atmosphere, or nitrogen, or any other inert gas. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then comes position of fan. <coughs> so the fan can be situated in the pressure chamber where negative pressure is created, okay, or in the section chamber where the air is sucked inside the drying chamber, okay? Okay. Next up, shape of the drying chamber. So there are basically four types of shapes. <coughs> First is the silo of the cylinder, cylindrical shape. Then comes a box-like shape. That may be a square or a rectangle. Then comes a square cross-section, which is a square, to be very precise. It is not a rectangular box. It is always a square box or a teardrop shape. Now, as you can see, the first diagram on your left, that is a cylindrical one, okay? This is a cylindrical drying chamber and then this is a collection chamber. Then comes a box type one or a square cross section. If it is square, then it's a square cross section. If it is cylindrical, oh, sorry, if it is uh, rectangular, then it's the box type one, okay? Here, as you can see in the picture, trays are present. The product is over the tray and the air moves upwards, okay? And then the last one is a teardrop form, okay? It is triangular, okay. like a teardrop, okay? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Then, uh, then comes types of uh, spray dryers depending upon the product being dried. So that product can be milk or other milk products like whey, cheese, slurry, okay? And or other food products like liquid food, like we have baby food, like Cerillac. So that food is first made into uh, is, is a li liquid, formulated in liquid stage and then dried. Okay. So these are different yes, depending upon the type of product. The type of spray drying machine will also change. Okay. okay. Sorry. Then comes foam spray drying. You remember I have you remember I had discussed foam spray drying in the first lecture we had. 
what happens in foam spray drying is this is a common drying technique in which the liquid and an inert gas is added okay and then a foam is formed which is sprayed and dried in a drying chamber okay so mostly the gases which are added is either air or nitrogen okay nitrogen is used in case of whole milk whereas air or other gases is used in case of skim milk powder okay non fat dried milks clear okay so what happens is that milk is mixed with this air okay it is pumped ha huh. milk is pumped then it is mixed with some inert gas air nitrogen or inert gas then it is atomized it is converted into small particles of foams then it is crossed through drying chamber and then it is dried out okay so basically what we do is that it is done by forcing the gas into the liquid product after pumping and is pumped out to the atomizer and this process is mostly used for drying whole milk skim milk butter milk cream whey and emulsified cheese flour means in short foam spray drying technique is used for milk products as well as milk by products like whey is a milk by product cream is a milk by product okay and whole yes, milk skim milk is a by product okay mm -hmm. so these things are used is this clear yes ma'am any confusion in this in this presentation or in this lecture no ma'am okay okay then we end the class today and the rest of the topic we will discuss tomorrow if you have any queries please do ask and i've shared the ppt with you so i hope no other problems yes, are there Okay. Yes, I'm leaving the. I'm ending the lecture. Yes,